हेलो हेलो आई एम डॉक्टर अजय शर्मा डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड कम्युनिकेशन इंजीनियरिंग जेम्स इंजीनियरिंग मैनेजमेंट टेक्निकल कैंपस नॉलेज पार्क थ्री ग्रेटर नोएडा द सब्जेक्ट दैट आई टीच इन दिस सेमेस्टर फॉर बीटेक सेवन सेमेस्टर स्टूडेंट्स इज ऑप्टो इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड ऑप्टिकल कम्युनिकेशन एंड द टॉपिक दैट आई डिस्कस इन दिस वीडियो लेक्चर इज physical principles of pi and diode p intrinsic and pi and diode oblique detector and detector response time oh, well uh, in previous video lecture we focused on uh, a general photodiode so the the concept how photodiode work uh, we already known from previous video lecture so uh, this particular photodiode which we called as a pin photodiode p means p type semiconductor i means intrinsic layer and n is n type semiconductor photodiode so pin stand for pin photodiode is a semiconductor positive negative pn structure with an intrinsic region sandwiched between the other two regions so how this structure is formed look at this diagram c this is a p type semiconductor right and this is n type semiconductor okay and in between p and n we insert intrinsic semiconductor and not only intrinsic semiconductor but this intrinsic layer behave like a depletion region why because intrinsic region is that region where no free charge carriers are found so intrinsic means there is no impurities so it's a pure you know this region is you know you know no free charge carriers are there in this region so this is a depletion region it's a very wide region right uh, so that region become a active region why because all the incident light that is coming from optical fiber is to be incident on that region right this is the region and because of this intrinsic region there is no free charge carriers no free electrons and holes this is high resistive region okay this is very high resistive region and we the biasing that we do in this particular photodiode is reverse biasing look at the reverse biasing because negative terminal is connected to p and positive terminal of the battery connected to n so this is a reverse bias because we don't want current because of this battery we want current because of photon so we need photo current you know rather than a normal current of foot of diode right so that's why we use a reverse biasing there so intrinsic region is very vast region because you insert the layer so depletion region is very wide and the photons are incident in that region right and not only that because of the high resistivity most of the electric field appear in that region right so the charge carrier are in stress right so the charge carrier there are bonded are in stress because of high electric field and because of high electric field high electric force so it is normally operated by varying a reverse by uh, by voltage and the magnitude of the reverse by voltage depends on the photodiode application but typically is less than a uh, few volts so this is all about the structure of p intrinsic and photodiode and it is if you compare with a general photodiode it is you know it's it's advanced 
and uh, this pion photodiode also used in many optical uh, applications <coughs> now uh, there is a concept of a dark current in photodiode try to understand this dark current you know uh, as the biasing that we do in this pin photodiode is reverse biasing and you know with the basic concept of diode is that when you do reverse biasing there is no current flowing through it the only way to flow current through the diode is if you bias if you biased a diode in forward condition so forward biasing makes the diode to you know to the currents to be flow but by doing this reverse biasing there is no current so the question is if the uh, and we, and we do reverse biasing in photodiode why because we want photo currents we what we want we want when the photon incident on the active layer then due to the photon then electrons are free so free electrons you know creates a current that we called as a uh, photo current so we want photo current that's why we use reverse biasing but what's happen what's happen uh, when no uh, even the the biasing is reverse bias so there is there is no question of current and not only that when there is no photon incident on this active layer even you get the current very very minimum amount of current when very 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 few amperes of current so that current is called dark current we call it as a dark current because even there is no light fall on the diode uh, structure detector structure even then we get a current a very small amount of current is that it's a dark current so this is the term sometime may be asked in examination two or three marks what is dark current so this is diagram so when no light is incident on the photodiode a current is still produced and this current is called a dark current this is also uh, another uh, diagram of uh, pin uh, photo detector look at this uh, diagram once again this is p type region this is n type region this is intrinsic region right no free electron holes are found and this is the depletion region of this is very wide so w is the width of this the depletion region right and this is intrinsic region no free electron no free charge carriers are found there right and the biasing is again a reverse biasing right so what's happened when the photon h mu fall on that in this particular example we have we and no, we assume one photon so when one photon is to be instant there and their energy is greater than the band gap energy then this one photon create one electron hole free that's photon creates one electron one hole free so free electrons you know this one photon create one free electron so thousands of photon incident of that then more electrons more free electrons are to be there and that creates a current then current is flowing across this load resistor ip is the photo current and that current flowing across this rl so this is this become a voltage you know and that is the output that we have so the output that we have is because of the photon current Right, photonic current or current due to photons, photo current, and photo current is because of the impact of photon on this intrinsic layer. So there is uh, the high electric field present in the depletion region, uh, very high electric field, so high electric force. So electron and hole, when they are you know tied together, they are they are in stress because the electric force is there. So little bit, little bit impact of very few uh, little bit impact of this photon having energy H mu. Uh, suddenly the electron holes are free, and creates a photo currents, right? So the high electric field present in the depletion region cause photo generated carrier to separate it and be collected across the reverse bias junction. So this gives rise to a current and flow in an external circuit. This circuit. 
uh, known as photocurrent and because of this photocurrent we have the output so in this way you get the output uh, which of course the electrical quantity and the input is the incident optical energy in that so that energy that energy that photonic energy this photons energy h mu converted into out electrical signal so in this way this pn photodetector you know convert this this light energy into a electrical one at its output so as far as the responsivity is concerned that we already discussed in previous lectures so oh, the question is what is the mathematical model of the photo 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 current that is coming that is create that is uh, come in the picture in pi in photo doubt. this is the equation this is the equation of this photo current q is the charge h is the planck's constant mu is the uh, frequency of the photon that is that have a impact on the uh, detector ip is the photon current p naught is the uh, total power that is incident on the uh, uh intrinsic region of pi and diode so this is the equation of you know uh, of primary uh, photo current resulting from absorption because photons are absorbed and because of the absorption they transfer their energy to the electrons and electrons become free and creates a current and that current is called as a photo current so as far as the quantum efficiency is concerned that you know concept is this particular concept is ki how many how many photons are incident and and how many holes or free electrons are uh, generated right so if for example it may be possible that 100 photons are uh, incident on the intrinsic layer and 60 60 electrons are free so look at the efficiency right not all photons are responsible to generate free electron only those photons generate free electron those have the energy h mu which is greater than or equal to a band gap energy of the material that is used in the manufacturing of the detector right so how you calculate efficiency efficiency is the electron hole photo generated pair and how you get that you get that if you divide current with a charge you always get a number so i if you if you have a photon current photo current and if you divide by a charge then the then this quantity a number of free electron and how you get the number of incident photon you calculate with the help of if you know the total power and total power of the light that is composed of uh, photons and if you divide total power with a power of a single photon which is h mu then you get a number of incident photons right so eta which is the efficiency quantum efficiency of a pin detector is the is the number of uh, free electrons upon number of incident photons and that can be calculated by simple logic if you divide i with q then this become a number of electrons free electrons and if you if you and divide this with a number of incident photon and how you get the number of incident photon you can calculate by divide the total power by a one power of one photon so you have, you get the number of photons there so responsivity is uh, that we already know with the previous lecture is the output upon input and output in the detector is ip and input is uh, power so put all these values and calculate so this is the responsivity and responsivity always depends upon you know this mu this is the frequency frequency as well as wavelength so that's why in previous lecture we always focused on that we always uh, have a concept that the rest of the responsivity of a detector depends upon its the wavelength of of the light so this particular mathematical model or equation clears that if the responsivity actually depends upon a frequency or wavelength now photo detector response time you know the response time of a photo detector with its output circuits depends mainly on the following three factors number one transit time of a photo carriers you know it is the time taken by the charge carriers to collect at their respective ends so when when photon are incident on the on the intrinsic layer the electrons and uh, the holes are free and they are collect themselves at their terminals 
so this, how much the time required these carriers to collect them so this is the transit time so the transit time of photo carriers uh, in the depletion region the transit time t generally depends upon time depends upon uh, and, uh, you know distance upon velocity and what is the distance distance is w which is which, which is the distance which is the width of a depletion region and vd is the drift velocity of the electron so if you divide w with vd you get a td so this is the td right so the transit time td depends on the drift velocity vd and the depletion layer with w and this is given in that right second uh, diffusion time uh, of uh, photocarrier outside the depletion region and third is the rc time constant of the circuit rc time constant is actually applicable in capacitor and uh, you know look at the again this particular picture you know uh, these whatsoever the charges are accumulated uh, there and there so in this particular depletion region behave like a uh, you know sometimes behave like a capacitor so capacitance is also developed there that's why we talking about right so diode always uh, form a capacitance at its depletion region junction so that's why the rc constant come in the picture so this is and this is the photodiode response of optical pulse so if this is the response when optical pulse added input then this is the response that you get so these are the two pictures that you you can see the what is the response time so typically response time of the photodiode that is not fully depleted so this is the response of carrier you know so the total output then the current that you that full current that you get after some time when the all the charge carriers are collected at their respective ends then you get the full flash current so initially you get very little bit of current because the many of the charge carriers are not collected on time because of some some carrier are slow so after some time then these reach to 100% of the output so you have to wait a little bit of time to get the output of a detector because all the charge carriers when collected at their respective end then you get the total current and so that's all thank you very much